So in the previous video, we saw that for the ASK, we can use input detector or coherent detector. This is theoretically speaking, but if you have the ability to implement coherent detector, then it's better for you to move to the phase shift field where uh, it is more power efficient than the ASK. But you have in the PSK, you have to use coherent detection. That's why if you have the ability to implement coherent detection, the PSK would be better choice for you than the ASK because it's more power efficient. In this video, we are going to discuss how to detect the FSK at the receiver. So at the receiver of the FSK, you have two choices. Either you use coherent detection or non-coherent detection. The idea of both of them, whether we are talking about coherent detection or non-coherent detection, the idea of both of them is we'll have two branches at the receiver. One branch will uh, try to decode the binary one. It will assume that the transmitted data is binary one. And the other branch will assume that the transmitted data is binary zero. And then we will compare the output of these two branches. If the first branch has the strongest signal, then the receiver will decide that the transmitted signal is binary one. If the second branch has the strongest signal, then the receiver will decide that the transmitted data is binary zero as well. So basically, for the, let's start with the coherent, let's start with the coherent detection. So in the coherent detection, you receive the signal, you divide it into two branches. In the first branch, you multiply by cosine omega and all t, so you are trying, you assume that the received data is binary zero, and you try to demodulate it. In the second branch, you assume that the received signal or the received information has binary one, the received signal is binary one, and you try to demodulate it. And then you pass through a no-pass filter. This is the regular coherent demodulation, similar to the one that we used with the double side band suppressed scanner in the beginning of the course. And then you sample the output, and you take the outputs here, you take a sample, a sample, you measure the voltage here, and you measure the voltage in the second branch, and then you compare them through a comparator. And then, if the signal here is stronger than the signal here, then you decide on binary zero. And if the signal here is stronger than the signal at the other branch, you decide that the received was binary one. So this is basically either if the signal up is stronger, you decide that this is binary zero. If the signal down is stronger, you decide on binary one. Why is that? Because if the received signal was binary one, let's do one example. If the received signal is binary one, let's say uh, this is received binary one, which means A cosine cosine omega one t. We'll do one of them and you can do the other. Assume that the received signal is binary one. When you multiply a cosine omega one t times a cosine omega one t, you will get a cosine squared, right? A cosine squared. So you will get here a cosine squared. Ah, this this pen. So you'll get here a cosine squared omega one t, right? And then when you pass it through the low-pass filter, what you are going to get here, you are go you're going to get a over 2, right? Because the cosine squared can be written as half 1 plus cosine 2 omega 1 t. So you are getting a constant here, a over 2. While now, this binary 1, so here we are assuming that you are receiving binary 1. Huh? This binary 1, when it goes through the other branch, a cosine omega 1 t multiplied by cosine omega naught t, it will give you cosine the sum and cosine the difference. So it will give you basically cosine omega 1 plus omega node t and will give you cosine the difference, cosine omega 1 minus omega node t. If you assume that omega 1 and omega node there is a big difference between them, then both components will not pass through the low-pass filter and theoretically speaking, the thing that is going to pass through the low-pass filter is zero. This is theoretically speaking, but actually what is going to pass is zero plus some noise. And because of this noise, we use this comparator. Here also there will be A over 2 plus noise. And then the comparator is going to compare the two branches. We'll find that this branch it has larger amplitude than the other 
branch, then you will decide that the received signal was binary one. One of the students, he asked me a good question. He told me, why don't we use just one branch? And if the signal is there, then we decide that this is binary one. If the signal is not there, there then we decide it's binary zero. So one branch is enough. This is theoretically correct if there is no noise in the channel. But because of the noise, if you have one ch channel or we have one branch only, the noise can show you that there is a signal while there is no signal. Right? There is zero, but the noise can uh, make it appear as, as if there is a signal in the branch and it can make you decide that this is binary zero while it is not a binary zero, it is binary one. Right? So because of the noise, we cannot have only one branch. We have to have two branches that we compare between them. Okay? So here, if you receive binary one, you will find that this branch will give you higher signal than the other branch. The other branch will give you zero plus noise. This will give you A over two plus noise. And this you decide, the comparator will decide that this branch is the active one. And this branch is responsible for frequency omega one, which is binary one. So the receiver will decide on binary one. Why in the other case that you should try by yourself, if you receive A cosine omega naught t, you will find that the receiver will find that the signal here is higher than the signal here and hence the receiver will decide that this branch is the active branch and binary zero was received. So this is called coherent detection. Why? Because we have to provide here a carrier that is perfectly synchronized with the transmitted carrier. What about the non-coherent detection? The non-coherent detection it depends on, again, when you receive the signal, you divide it into two branches. But here we don't use a carrier synchronized with the received carrier, actually use a filter. So we are going to use a filter that is center band bus filter at F0, center around F0. So we are going to use a band bus filter here, center around F0. So this filter will pass only what? It will pass only the ASK, ASK signal, which is ha, which had a carrier omega naught. If the transmitted signal has a carrier omega naught, it will not pass through this filter, right? So one branch will have a filter centered at F naught, and the other branch will have a band bus filter at F1. So one of them is going to pass the binary zero signals. And the other one is going to pass the binary one signal. If you receive binary one, it will give you a signal at the output of this filter and it will give you zero at the output of this filter. If you receive binary zero, if you receive binary zero, which is basically omega naught, it will pass through this filter and nothing will pass through this filter. So basically, you pass through a band bus filter and then you use an input detector to detect the input. Envelope detector, envelope detector, envelope detector, and then you compare the two branches. You take a sample, you take a sample, and you compare. Comparator. If you find, if you find that the upper branch is has higher signal than the lower branch, then you decide on binary zero. If you find that the lower branch has higher signal than the upper branch, then you decide on binary 1. Why is that? Again, because the upper branch is going to pass only a signal if there is a binary 0 transmitted. If there is a binary 0 received here at the receiver, then you will get a signal here. If there is binary 1 received at the receiver, binary 1 means frequency omega 1. So it will pass through this branch and the other branch will be 0. Of course, there will be some noise, and this is why we use two branches rather than one branch. If there is no noise, it's enough to use only one branch because if it's either zero or one, right? If zero is transmitted, you'll get the signal. If you don't get the signal, this means it's binary. But because of the noise, because of the existence of the noise, we have to have two branches and compare between them. So if you receive binary, let's say if you receive binary zero here. Then it will pass through this filter, you will get a signal, 
and envelope detector will get A, okay, or A over 2, depending on uh, the, the coefficient of the filter, while here, nothing will pass, nothing will pass. Of course, there will be also A plus noise, and here 0 plus noise, and hence we have to convert them, and we'll find that this branch has higher, higher amplitude than this branch, then we decide it's binary 0 received. So this is how we do detection for the FSK coherently and non-coherently. Let's go back now to the FSK. The FSK, we said that we have to use coherent detection. But there is a trick that we use in order to avoid this coherent detection in the uh, phase shift keying. In the phase shift keying, to avoid coherent detection, what they do is, they do a little bit of modification here. So in, instead of uh, transmitting the binary 1 with a phase 0 and binary 0 with phase 5, they do something called differential. Differential phase shift keying, DPSK, differential phase shift keying. So now the word differential is repeating with us many times. We have uh, differential, uh, differential PCM, differential encoding with the dual binary and this is the third time we hear the word differential it's differential PSK, DPSK the differential PSK allows us to use non-coherent detection how is that? so they say instead of transmitting binary 1 using phase of 0 and binary 0 using phase of 5 they say we can transmit the binary 1 with DPSK of T, this is 5 DPSK of T, this is the signal that will be transmitted. Binary 1 can be transmitted by a phase similar to the previous phase. So if the previous phase was 0, you transmit again phase 0. If the previous phase was 5, you transmit phase 5. You transmit binary 1 with a phase similar to the previous phase. Regardless of the previous phase came from binary 0 or binary 1, it don't care. If the previous phase is 0 and you want to transmit binary 1, you transmit again phase 0. If the previous phase was 5 and you want to transmit binary 1, then you transmit a phase 5 again. And for binary 0, you transmit phase opposite to the previous. This is what we call differential PSK. Okay, how can this help us in avoiding coherent detection? It can help us in avoiding coherent detection by designing the receiver like this. So in the receiver, you receive the signal. Again, you divide it into two branches. One branch that contains the signal, and then the other branch, you are going to use a delay by one symbol interval. Delay by one symbol interval. And then you multiply the current symbol times here the previous symbol. So this is the current symbol. And because of the delay, this will be the previous symbol. Right? Current, symbol, and previous symbol. And then you use the Lomas filter. Let's now see what will happen here. Now, if the, I'm going to remove this, for now, now if the current symbol is the same as the previous symbol, so you receive, let's say, you receive A cosine, and let's assume that the previous symbol was also A cosine. You can assume that they are the same. So we'll take the case now. Yes, the current up and the previous current and previous are same. At the receiver, huh? At the receiver. We are discussing the receiver now. At the receiver, you are going to delay by one symbol. And let's assume the case now that the current symbol and the previous are the same, which means the binary one was transmitted, right? So the receiver, how the receiver is going to know that this is a binary one? 
The receiver is going to see that the current symbol and the previous symbol they are the same. So it's going to multiply them. So the receiver is going to get, uh, let's assume that the signal here is called E of t. So the receiver is going to get E of t, which is A cosine omega c t times the previous symbol, which is also A cosine omega c t. Even if you assume that the previous symbol is negative and the current symbol is negative, both of them the same, so the negative will cancel with the negative. You can assume that the current and the previous they are the same, whether both of them are positive or both of them are negative, it's the same thing. You will get the same result. So this will give you a squared cosine squared omega ct, and if you pass through a low pass filter, what you are going to get is you are going to get uh, after the low pass filter, you are going to get a squared over 2. While if case 2, if the current symbol and the previous symbol are opposite, opposite phase, have opposite phase, have opposite phase, then one of them is a cosine, for example, and the other one is negative a cosine. Then when you multiply them times each other, you will get negative a squared cosine squared omega ct. And if you pass this through a low pass filter, what you will get, you will get negative a squared over 2. So for the receiver, the receiver will receive the symbol. And he has a delay, so he has the current symbol and he has the previous symbol. He will multiply, the receiver will multiply the two symbols, the current and the previous together. If the receiver finds that the result of the low pass filter is a squared over 2, the receiver will understand that the current and the previous, they are the same, and it will understand that binary one was translated. If the receiver multiplies the two symbols, and after passing through the low pass filter, the receiver finds that the output is negative instead of positive, negative a squared over 2, then the receiver will understand that the current symbol is opposite to the previous symbol, and the receiver will decide that this is binary Z. Of course here, if you look at the receiver, you will not find any synchronization issue. You will not find any coherent problem. We don't have to generate a carrier that is perfectly synchronized with the received carrier or anything. It's just a delay by one symbol and then we multiply it. Right? Then this is a non-coherent detection. So we can use non-coherent detection with phase shift key Condition that we use differential phase shift key. So differential phase shift key allows us to use non-coherent detection. So in conclusion, in conclusion, for amplitude shift key, we can use envelope detection or coherent detection. But it doesn't make sense to use coherent detection with the ASP because if you have the ability to implement coherent detection, it's better for you to move to the phase shift key. For the phase shift key, you have to use coherent detection or you use the French shift key, and this allows you to use non-coherent detection. For the frequency shift key, you can use coherent detection, and you can use non-coherent detection. And keep in mind, although we can use coherent and non-coherent in some cases, coherent detection gives you better performance. It gives you better performance than non-coherent detection. However, it's more expensive. That's it for the comparison between the three uh, schemes. We'll stop here in this video and we'll see you in the next video.